and got the 100 million views. <laughs> the other day I was in Washington, D.C., and uh, uh, at an event, I was uh, at a dinner where President Obama and some other folks were there and I had a picture taken with him. But there were a lot of photographers around. And one of the things I noticed is that I don't believe that photographers ever learn to count past three. Mm -hmm. Because every single one of them said, okay, now, one, two, three, and flash. One, two, three. And I asked them, have you ever learned to count the four, five, six, seven? Because every single one of them would always say, now, one, two, three. I guess they can count more than that, but that seems to be the, that seems to be the thing that they do. Uh, I said I was in Washington with uh, uh, the president and uh, with members of the Congressional Black Caucus. And the reason I uh, tell you that is because Many, many years ago in this country, as you know, we were brought over here, and I'm sure you know that we, our descendants, were brought over from Africa, from the, our continent, on a on boats uh, and, and in bondage. And of course, we were brought here and we were uh, enslaved folks. Uh, at that time, of course, this entire country was ruled by uh, white people, that we had no say, that we were not able to be free, we were not able to do anything. There were no members that looked like us, no people that looked like us that we're making the laws in this country. I'm proud to say now that we have some 43 members, African-American members, men and women, who are part of the Congress, who are now down in Washington, D.C., trying to make sure that laws are passed that will make it possible for all of you to share in the, the riches of this country. Uh, I'm not happy about what's going on now. Some of you may know uh, that uh, can you hear me without this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Some of you may know that um, my, my brother, Donald Payne, any of you know Donald Payne? <laughs> Donald Payne was the first African American uh, ever elected from the state of New Jersey to serve in the Congress of the United States of America. The very first one. Uh, it's unfortunate that we have to say uh, only one. The fact is that uh, now we have his son. My brother passed away about a year and a half ago, and uh, uh, he was my best friend for about 75 years. Or about my best friend, so I lost my best friend. But this state lost a wonderful legislator. Mm -hmm. I think a man that served uh, the people uh, many, many years ago. Some of you may know that he was a teacher at Southside High School then, and later became uh, Malcolm X Shabbat. My brother was a teacher there, and then he started a program at the Y. Now, some some uh, youngsters, uh, some of you may know people that were members of his program when he went to the Y, when he took many, many uh, high school students down to the Y to participate in programs. Uh, at that time, in our history, you know, as you know, blacks and whites were separated by law. And at that time, in the city of Newark, New Jersey, they had a black Y and they had a white Y. The black Y was the Y where we were permitted to go, and it was a storefront. It was a little tiny store that was turned into a Y for that neighborhood. And downtown on Broad Street in Newark, if you ever go, you may have been down to the Y downtown. They were building a brand new, beautiful Y with pools and things like that. But they did not want African American kids to come down there. Well, what happened, Mr. Payne had so many people, young people that became um, parts of his organization, they outgrew that boy down on Jones Street, that storefront. So he insisted, and the students insisted, that no longer will we go into the storefront, but they have a new Y downtown, we belong to the Y, and they went downtown, and they sat and they insisted. So that Y downtown was opened up for African Americans to participate in. Now, it was a Young Men's Christian Association. Can you imagine Young Men's Christian saying that black people and white people cannot share the same pool. The Christians were saying that you cannot be together. But uh, Donald Payne and his program began to break that down. And more than that, Donald Payne, who was a local guy, we were born in the city of Newark, grew up in a cold water flat. And I'm sure that most of you don't even know what a cold water flat is. Does any of any you know what a cold water flat is? <laughs> I don't mean you. I don't mean you. <laughs> cold water flat. Uh, you, you know what that is? A cold water flat, a flat is like an apartment, they call it, uh, an apartment was, was called a flat. And cold water meant that we had no hot water in our apartment, that there was no, no hot water. That we, if we wanted to take a bath, etc., we had to heat the water on a, a stove and dump it into a big, where we lived, we had to dump it into a big tub on the floor and take a bath there. We lived in cold water flats. People saw Donald Payne become a congressman, 
They saw Donald Payne become an international figure, and they said, oh, he must have been born with a silver spoon in his mouth. The fact is that the wheat barely had spoons, period. <laughs> silver spoon. And I tell you that story because when people saw Donald Payne, and he rose to the national president of the YMCA, Donald Payne, black man like me and you, was elected the first black person ever to be the head of the national YMCA. And in that capacity, Donald Payne was able to travel around this country and around the world because the YMCA had refugee camps. There were in Africa and other places, people were in refugee camps. You know, the colonists were still there, etc. A lot of them were refugees. The YMCA, the worldwide, used to hold, used to run camps to take care of these people, refugees. And Donald Payne became the, the chairman of the refugee camps around the world. So he traveled around the world to make sure that people who were in refugee camps were being treated right. But what happened during that time is that he went to Uganda, for instance, where there was a Y there, and he met the person that was running the Y there. He went to various places around the world, and he met people in the Y program, and they grew up. And so when Donald Payne finally got elected to Congress, he had traveled to more than 80 countries in Africa and around the world before he got to Congress. And what happened also is that when there were some civil wars and things like that going on in these countries, Donald Payne was able to call some of the leaders because many of the leaders of these countries had grown up in his Y program around the world. So he knew many of them. So when Donald went to Congress, they used to call upon him to please call the various <laughs> factions in these civil wars and try to get them to be peace. And he was able, he knew many of them. He was able to have the guys he grew up, come on, man, now you can go over my wide program. What are you guys doing fighting? You're the leaders of your country now. And he was able to bring about conflict resolution, where he was able to bring them together in many, many instances. So he, he won many awards for bringing peace around the world. Some of you may uh, may, may not know, and young people, but Donald Payne was uh, was in uh, Somalia, Somalia. And his plane was shot at uh, when he went to visit and try to talk to the president. He talked to the president there. And then as he was leaving in his plane, uh, they shot at his plane and uh, uh, they didn't hit him, of course, but, but he was there. Uh, I tell you those things because I want you to know, I want you to know that you are like me, black, black me, but there is no limit that you cannot reach. There's nothing that you cannot do, believe me. Uh, Donald rode around with, with Bill Clinton, with, with my brother used to talk to. Bill Clinton, he would tell him that we, we, the United States of America, have to begin with, begin doing more for, the, for Africa, for more countries in Africa. And my brother traveled with Bill Clinton uh, for six nations. He traveled with him on Air Force One and introduced him to many leaders there. So that's when the United States began paying a little bit more attention to Africa. And it was, you know, my brother gets a lot of credit for having, do, having done that. But the Amistad legislation that was mentioned earlier, when I went to school, many years ago, I won't tell you how many years ago, but when I went to school many, many years ago, I went to a school in Belleville, and I was one of two black students in my class. When they taught us, uh, the first story that I remember hearing from my teacher, and Bob Kerbin, the sister and I were the only two black in my class. The first story, fable, that the teacher told us, and I'm the only one, only one or two black, was this story here, a little black sambo. If you believe, Little Black Sambo was a story that they told of the kids about Little Black Sambo and he lived in a jungle and his mother Little Black Mumbo and all that kind of stuff. That's the story they told us to give us the impression that black people lived in jungles. The black people ran, look at that, pictures of, uh, funny looking pictures of us. That's all they wanted us to know about black people, make, make us think that that's who we are. And then at the same time, however, well, the other kids in the school, they had this book called Dick and Jane. Yes. Dick and Jane is locked down. The black family lived in a jungle, so the white family lived on a nice, beautiful, tree-lined street. And no, how wonderful. So what happened was that I asked people, have you ever met Sambo? And they said, no. I said, well, you're looking at him. Because in Belleville, when I walked home from school, they called me Sambo, okay? And that, that was the thing. That was what we were subjected to when I went to school. So, I tell you that to let you know that when I went to the, uh, the New Jersey Assembly, I was elected to the New Jersey Assembly as a legislator. I had an opportunity then to address what I, what I suffered when I went to school. I had an opportunity to say to people and legislators in the state of New Jersey that no longer will our children be subjected to that kind of treatment. That now we have the opportunity to change that. 
because I wanted our children to know that we had as much to build this country what it is than everybody else did, all right? And if we make people think that all we did, our kids have to think that all we did was this, then they won't have any self-pride, won't have any pride in themselves. But the fact is, I'm sure you, you all heard about the Revolutionary War, right? And uh, Paul Revere, has anybody ever talked about Paul Revere? Right. And how brave he was, and he thought about, the, you know, fought against the, the British, etc. Paul Revere and all those guys. And then there was a Battle of Bunker Hill. Anybody hear the Battle of Bunker Hill? Of course. And uh, Major Pitcairn was at the Battle of Bunker Hill. He was a British guy, right? Anybody hear Major Pitcairn? Major Pitcairn was at the, at the Battle of Bunker Hill. And they told us that we were there and we fought and we beat the British. They told us about uh, Paul Revere and they told us about Nathan Hale and Patrick Henry and George Washington. And all. Every single person they taught us about that beat the British was white. They never ever taught us that we black folks were at that war except when they finally came up with Christmas Addicts. Mm -hmm. You've heard of Christmas Addicts yeah. maybe. Have yes. anybody heard of Christmas Addicts? Yeah. Probably not. You know, never taught us that we were there. there. Paul Revere, you know Paul Revere's yeah. name, right? You know all these other guys' names. <laughs> the fact is that we were at the Battle of Bunker Hill. Peter Salem, remember that name. Peter Salem was a black uh, colonist, a black man like us, who fought at that battle and he's the one who killed Major Pitcairn. What happens in this country is that when we do something good, they take it out of the history book. Mm -hmm. When we do something bad, it's all over the place. They yeah. said, made us think that all we were was slaves of picking enemies. Mm -hmm. We fought in the Revolutionary War. We fought in the Revolutionary War. Over 5,000 blacks fought in the Revolutionary War on the, on the colonist side. 5,000 fought with the British because the British said, if you fight with us and we win the war, we're gonna set you free. So 5,000 fought with the British and 5,000 fought with us.